Hello American, Argentinian and all international viewers. Welcome to the control room hosted by Series Greener Solutions. My name is Hervé and as you may notice, I have a strong French accent. In this second video, we will talk about dehumidification. It is one of the lesser talked about and yet more important subjects related to the grow environment. Before we jump into discussing dehumidification, let's first make sure we have a basic understanding of transpiration. If you didn't know, plants transpire. Transpiration is the process by which plants intake water through the root system in a liquid form and exhaust it from the stomata in a vapor form which increases the amount of moisture in the greenhouse and its relative humidity. Usually, transpiration is driven by environmental factors such as light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration, and vapor pressure deficit. Vapor pressure deficit, also called VPD, is used to describe the combination of temperature and relative humidity of the air surrounding the plant leaves. When talking about light intensity, we need to think about energy. The more energy the plants receive, the more energy they need to release in order to stay healthy. And this is done through transpiration. A healthy crop transpires a lot, so there will always be some dehumidification to deal with. If your greenhouse is ventilated, the cheapest way to deal with this added moisture is to exhaust it outside. It gets a little more complicated with a sealed greenhouse like the Ceres Sun Chamber, which doesn't exhaust the air but instead relies on a HVACD system to recirculate and treat the air. So you might ask yourself, why should I go sealed? A sealed system allows for many benefits such as biosecurity and a better controlled environment. The downside is a higher energy expenditure. Typically in sealed environments, there are two methods of dehumidification using refrigerant, also called condensing, and desiccant. But first, let me introduce the concept of condensation. When warm and moist air gets in contact with cold surfaces, the water vapor in the air condensates. A manifestation of this phenomenon is the dew you can see at dawn on grass or plants after a clear sky night. Clear sky nights make ground surfaces emit more energy meaning the ground gets colder than cloudy nights when the ground loses less energy since the difference of temperature is smaller. Air can hold less moisture as it gets colder. The temperature at which it cannot hold any more moisture is the saturation point or dew point. Now let's talk about refrigerant system. Refrigerant or condensing dehumidification uses the same principle as the refrigeration cycle which we covered in a previous video. Please check the link in the description below. To summarize, when cooling is required, the warm air from the greenhouse goes through the condenser coil which is filled with a liquid called refrigerant. The heat transfers from the warm air to the cold refrigerant. The air being cooled can then be introduced into the grow environment until the desired temperature is reached. The same process can be applied to dehumidification. In a grow environment, the excessive moisture introduced by plant's transpiration is contained as water vapor in the air. The same air is then sucked towards the HVACD system. When air makes contact with the refrigerant cooling coil and reaches its dew point, condensation occurs meaning dehumidification is happening. Condensate water is considered clean and can be reclaimed. However, it is not advised to reuse this water directly into your solution unless it has been treated. Dehumidification is a very hungry process. The Ecoloop is a smart dehumidification system since it uses refrigerant dehumidification with efficient design of the cooling coils and reuses some of the heat loss from the compressor. It also allows for a very high reclaim percentage of the water being transpired from the plants, up to 95%. Now let's discuss desiccant dehumidification. Do you have a cat? Is it inside? Do you use a litter? Imagine a giant wheel filled with cat litter. 
The humid air that we want to dry is blown against this wheel that provides dry air, which needs to be ducted back into the environment. The wheel keeps on rotating and after taking the moisture out of the air, the part of the wheel that gets wet needs to be reactivated. In other words, the litter needs to be dried. In order to achieve that, hot air is blown through it, producing a very warm and wet air stream that is usually rejected outside of the building. The desiccant is now reactivated and it is ready to absorb some of the moisture from the growth space again. So now we are in the opposite scenario of the condensing dehumidifier. We need an additional heating process to regenerate the litter, which requires energy and then a cooling process in order to re-inject the dry air to the grow environment, which also requires energy. There are a few downsides to the desiccant. The major one is that it is impossible to reclaim the water taken out from plant transpiration in your grow environment. The other downside is that it's very heavy and bulky, so it is usually not suitable for small spaces. We hope this video was helpful to understand the basic of dehumidification and remember that growing healthy plants means dealing with their transpiration. A special thanks to Mali Jerez for her drawings and creative work. Follow us on our social media and contact us for more information. We are Serious Greenhouse Solutions, designing for a better future.